right, now we move to our first interview uh, of this morning, and someone who is more than happy to front up, which is good. And as you know, I, I, I think one of the most fascinating things that happened, um, that has happened in this country in recent times is that protest at Parliament. And I think still, gosh, in fact, people last night were talking about it socially. What it meant, who those people were, what it uh, signifies politically, etc. But one thing is for sure, there were certain people who were identified with the protest and a lot of people got arrested at the protest. And there were threats of trespass against people like Winston Peters and I think Matt King and others. Um, one family, I guess, that were quite prominent were the Baker family from Rangi Ora and gosh, it's North Canterbury, isn't it? Um, and we've had Chantelle Baker on, on the programme. Um, her dad, Leighton Baker, um, was leader of the New Conservative Party and he was arrested and charged at the parliamentary protest. But I read this week that all charges have been dropped and I sort of scratched my head over this. How can you go from being a threat to the public and then nothing overnight? So we are joined now uh, to discuss all this and what's gone on by Leighton Baker. Leighton, welcome to the programme. Nice to have you with us. Go, Sean. Thanks for having us on. All right. Now, did you get arrested at the protest and, like, loaded into the paddy wagon? Yeah, I did. Got, got my own little room in the paddy wagon. <laughs> um, what was the nature of that arrest like, and when did it come? At what part of the protest did you get arrested? Um, oh, I'm not sure what time it was. Uh, it was as the police were coming down uh, through the grounds. On the and, last day? Uh, on, the, on the very last day, yep. All right. Okay. And how long were you held for, Leighton? Uh, overnight. So okay, and what were you charged with? Uh, I was charged with obstructing the police and trespass. Okay, uh, well, they tried to serve a trespass notice on you. So, well, that's not pleasant, and I guess being held in police cells isn't isn't pleasant. Um, were you prepared to defend those charges? Yeah, I was, um, and that's why it's been going on for the last six months. Uh, however, uh, oh, Friday a week ago, um, there was another hearing and the police dropped the charges, which is a relief, really, because it's pretty expensive um, yeah. just to even do the court process. It's long, it's drawn out, it's uh, one other yeah. thing. Did they give a reason why they, why they dropped the charges? I haven't been given a reason, no. Um, they may have given my solicitor a reason, I haven't sat down here to debrief with her, but, um, yeah, I, I haven't been given one. All right, so you are clean-skinned now. You're not going to... You're not going to do a long lag and parry Max or anything, which is good to know, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I visited prison before, and it's not somewhere I want to spend a whole lot of time. Yeah. But, Leighton, so basically you get scooped up at Parliament, right? You get charged with something, and then the police drop the charges. It's almost like it was an excuse just to move you on. Yeah, well, they've dropped a whole lot of charges previously. In my first hearing, the guy in front of me had half his charges dropped, and the guy after me had all of them dropped. So, you know, Were they protesters sure too, to or not? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, how does this? Well, well, look, I really want to know how you feel about it because it seems to me that's a hell of a lot of kerfuffle, a hell of a lot of the stress you've been to, for the police to just walk away. The problem I see it, Sean, is that you know where do we get to when when we got the police in New Zealand, the government's using them against the people instead of talking to them. Like the, the whole thing about the protest is the people wanted the government to talk to them about the mandates. They just hurt people there. I, I went there after the Thursday when I saw it happen. I thought, that can't happen in New Zealand. That, that's not right. And that's when I went there. And I basically spent three weeks simply walking the grounds talking to people and hurt people. I met people there that had, uh, you know, were severely injured. Uh, and they, there was no respite for them. There was no, they were basically ignored. So they're going, oh, we took one for the team. It's obviously not anti-vaxxers. We took one for the team, and here I am in a wheelchair. I was fit and healthy. And, yeah, and yeah like, no, I don't know that I really want to get in. I mean, I, 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 I'm, no, I'm, I'm, still, I'm, I'm still, still just telling to give you, you why that statistically the side yeah, yeah, effects yeah, of the right. vaccine are exactly where, they, exactly where we were told they would be pretty well. Well, I'm just saying I was there meeting hurt people, and, and that's all I was doing. So, yeah. And then while I was there, um, the people, a whole other different groups that were getting together to say, hey, how, how do we move this thing forward? How do we get response? They put a letter to the government and said, hey, look, you know, we want to talk. We want to sit and have a discussion. Uh, here's an intermediary that you can ring. And they put my number down. And yeah. so then the police would ring me. Uh, I rang the police. I, I met with the deputy commissioners while I was there. So uh, the last thing I did is obstruct the police. I spent my time trying to keep yeah. the protest peaceful. 
and legal and doing the best I could. Yeah, and Leighton, it's interesting. I've talked to a number of people who I think were talking to you who were approached to be intermediaries or go-betweens because it was very hard to figure out who was running that protest, if anyone actually was, or if it was just spontaneous and it kind of moved moved like, like the wind. Um, uh, but I do have, and I've seen texts from Trevor Mallard to people saying, I'm not going to meet with Nazis. It seemed to me it was pretty... You were never really going to get, um, certainly from the speaker or from the political side, there was never going to be a meeting of minds or a negotiated end to that. And, and that's the trouble, because those... Like, I'm, I'm 55, Sean, now. You're, I'm 55. I've been working since I was 18, paying tax since I was 18. So, to me, the politicians work for us. That's their role. And, and so... As representatives, they can't represent people they won't listen to. And all that people want to do was them to listen to them, and they refuse to do it. That's their basic core role. So, you know, if I say I'm a builder, but I don't go and build anything, am I really a builder? And, and all we were asking them to do is fulfil their core obligation to the people that pay their wages, which is actually sit down and listen. They didn't have to agree. A bit like you, you don't have to agree with me, but you're willing to listen. All we were doing is asking them, would you be willing to listen? And like you say, that they all agreed in Parliament, no one's going to go and speak to those people. They're scum. And we're not. We're hard-working, tax-paying New Zealanders that just want our representatives to listen to us. Yeah. Um, was Chantelle charged as well? You no, know, she wasn't. No. OK. Um... So you are clean now. <laughs> what are you doing next, Leighton? Because you're no longer running the new Conservative Party. Chantelle seems to be running this new organisation. Are you just giving it up and having the quiet life? Huh. Well, I'm actually in discussion with a whole lot of different groups all the time and just saying, you know, what do we want for New Zealand going forward? Because, yeah, the protest was over over the mandates. It was also over just too much government interference in our everyday lives. Um, you know, the government's meant to be there to support us, not rule over us, and it sort of flipped itself on the head, and, and I think some of the drama we're seeing in New Zealand over so many different issues, whether it be three waters or whether it be the regulations in farming or business or anything, or, or, or even employment, it's really restricting how New Zealanders live, and that's part of what it was about. And so there's a lot of groups that say, you know, if New Zealand carries on down this track, we're stuffed. We need people in Parliament that actually have got some vague idea what they're doing, have a real plan going forward. And so um, it's just trying to come up with a group that's viable to do that. Mm. Hey, Leighton, um, I'd say congratulations for the charges being dropped and that you can get on uh, with whatever you want to do in life. And I thank you very much for fronting up on the platform this morning. It's nice to have you with us. Oh, it's nice talking to you, Sean. You enjoy your day. I'm going to go and enjoy a bit of sunshine outside. Good on you. Leighton Baker there, former leader of the New Conservatives. And I guess he's going to be known as the father of Chantelle eventually. Um, charged with trespass, oh, trespassed and charged with um, obstructing a police officer. Charges dropped at the parliamentary protest. Maybe... Maybe there's a possibility, though I would hate to suggest that the New Zealand Police Force are in any way subject to political pressure. Maybe there is a feeling, as the political polls tend to move in one way, that the government of the day would like to say, oh, that parliamentary pro what parliamentary protest? That never happened. We never ignored all those people on the lawns of parliament. That just never happened. And maybe this, maybe dropping charges and letting people walk is all about just trying to make this go away. No, 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 it never happened. Never, ever happened.